I want to talk about hope for 2021, but also give us a sense of just how devastating it is for the industry to find us in lockdown once again this this uh, this winter. Well, we'd opened all six of our theatres, and I'm very proud to say that at the week of the 7th of December, we did no less than 42 performances of 12 different shows across our six theatres, and people came. There was a big pent-up demand to return to the theatre from the public and, uh, you know, it helped the local economy in London. We put 20,000 customers back in that week. But in a normal week, the West End will be putting something like 350,000 people into London every week. That's a serious amount of people and a serious amount of spend in other parts of the economy, particularly hospitality. So it's a big blow. It's a blow for all the actors that have been given their jobs back, the front of house staff, all the technical staff. But uh, at the end of the day, we all have no choice but to simply dust ourselves off and pick, up, get ready to pick ourselves up all over again. Yes, the stop and start nature of this then, Nico, I yeah. suppose is something that many businesses in your industry and in other industries are having to get used to. That must be costly. Are you managing to make it more, less costly, less disruptive as you go through? Are you getting used to having to operate in that fashion? Uh, the uncertainty of the closure and opening is very difficult. Um, the biggest single issue is that in order to reopen, you have to to do a lot of preparation. Uh, and uh, I found that it was cost, cost me 250,000 pounds in reopening costs, quite a lot of that spent on bringing staff out of furlough. But also we, we all invested in huge COVID preparation measures so that we could compete, keep people safe within the buildings. And we'd also set up a COVID testing hub for our own actors, with our own nurse. And we were testing 120 people a day in order for the actors to be able to go on stage and be safe. So it was expensive. So half a million pounds additional costs between lockdown one, closure, lockdown two. Um, but we are still intending to open, reopen again as soon as we can, because we've already invested now in a lot of the measures. It'll be cheaper for us to reopen next time because we've already done all the work. Right, yeah, that, that, that's interesting. Let me ask you about the, the, the support that's been available to people who yeah. either work in the theatre or supply the theatre. It is an industry that I know operates on many different models. Some people come to it as, as freelancers, some are self-employed. Where are the gaps that you've seen, Nika, in the way that the, the government has, you know, you've furloughed people, that's fine for those yes. that are fully employed, but where are the gaps? Well, furlough was just a great... Uh, instrument to bring in for everybody and saved a lot of jobs. But the difficulty was that a number of people within theatre, including surprisingly to many, most all of the performers. So if you're on a long contract in the West End, you are technically self-employed, even though you're actually on my payroll uh, because of where the tax, uh, tax constructions are. So a lot of those people fell between the gaps. They didn't have the right kind of paperwork. They didn't have enough tax returns to submit. And so they were entitled to absolutely nothing except unemployment benefit. And then the industry stood up and tried to help. And like um, Sam Mendes, the great theatre and now film director, he went on a big campaign uh, to raise money for theatre artists. And we raised a lot of money together. Uh, and that helped, but we were talking about very small amounts of money here, a thousand pounds grant uh, to an actor uh, or stage manager out of work, and it just wasn't enough. So I think it's very difficult when there are different, different um, types of employment to find a scheme, however willing the government might be, that fits everybody. And in our case, we just found all our freelancers yeah. falling through the gaps. That's, you know, directors, designers, writers who would normally live off royalties of a play. All those people, they, they just didn't have a scheme that, was, that was, could apply to them. Uh, and it was difficult. Yes. And Nico, are you concerned about the long-term survival of the West End? And I suppose I don't just mean theatres here. I mean everything that adds up to the West End experience, whether that's uh, tourism or, tra or, or, or shopping. Uh, and theatres play a key, and hospitality, of course, and, and theatres play a key part of that. What are your expectations for what a, a new version of normal might look like post-pandemic? My expectations are that we are going to have to, like 
the whole country and other countries, let's, let's just face the reality of the situation we're all in, is that there's going to have to be a rebuilding process. I think theatre is very resilient, it's resourceful. People think out of the box. We will be opening up across the country. We will be realistic and be thinking about the size of the shows. Um, we would like some help from the government in terms of we are all back for business campaigns. I, I'm not expecting 100% return to audiences. We, we've been doing most fantastic capacities for the last 10 years, every year. The box office and the ticket numbers at the West End have grown. And I've been enjoying over my six cities the most amazing audience levels. So we're all going to be a little bit tighter on the money. People are going to be thinking how they spend it. I believe that audiences have returned, but we need to be smart about pricing. We need to be smart about what we're putting on. And we need to slightly lower our expectations and the understanding that it's not all going to be uh, all eyes and teeth on day one. We're going to have to expect that it'll take mm. a year, two years, maybe even three years to rebuild completely. But I do think there will be enough capacity for us to be able to continue to present very high, very high quality work. And maybe there has to be a little realism about perhaps everyone taking a little bit less in order to provide the most amount of work for everybody. And if you're thinking smartly about what to put on then, Nika, what, what do you yeah. think we will be on the other side of this? What will we be in the mood to go and watch? Will we want to just some sheer escapism from what we've all been through over the last year or so? Or will we want to explore that experience theatrically? I think we definitely will want a really big laugh. Um, I've already, already found in reopening that <laughs> audiences were very, very keen just to release all the frustration they've had, and have a laugh, uh, have a sing, we have really good musical work, musical theatre work, and concerts. We've been doing a lot of musical theatre concerts. Um, and we will be exploring how the um, pandemic has affected us. Playwrights have got their, their, their pens ready already. My musical, Everybody's Talking About Jamie, which is set today, when we reopened, we had written COVID into the script. So we actually open in a classroom and the, the uh, year 11, that 16 year old students were winding up their teacher with their masks, pretending not to be able to hear her and teasing her. And, and the audience just really responded to it. So we will want to see little of that, but what I think I might be doing is simply postponing my next Beckett production for a while. <laughs> that, yes, I, I can definitely see why you might reach that conclusion. Nika, thank you so much for joining us. Really My pleasure.